Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Sometimes spirits are helpful, sometimes they're a comfort, and at other times they're simply neutral. Tonight's stories, however, take us into the realm of vengeful spirits whose goal in death seems to be to frighten at best and harm at worst. To paraphrase Forrest Gump, ghosts are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. But you know exactly what you'll get with me. New content every Thursday at 5 p.m. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never forget to join me right here. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared together. Together, 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 together. My earliest paranormal memory is when I was around four. I woke up in the middle of the night and had to pee. At the end of the hallway in the living room, there was a shadow person. I couldn't make out any features, but I just knew it was looking at me. I stood there frozen staring at it with my heart pounding in my ears. And then, it just kind of melted down the wall. Imagine you're standing against the wall with your knees bent, and you slide down to the floor. It was like that, but no sound at all. I didn't make it to the bathroom. I was only four. Cut me a little slack. When I was older, I moved into a townhouse in Columbus, Ohio, with my friend Gary. The two-story townhouse had a huge basement, about three-quarters finished, and then walled off was the unfinished part of the basement that held the washer-dryer, water heater, and furnace. It also had a laundry chute. From day one, the dogs would growl, snarl, and bark at the basement door. Not long after moving in, we'd notice pounding sounds coming from the basement. At first, I wrote it off as the water heater or the furnace. But it got stronger over time, to the point that you could actually feel it in the floor and the pictures would vibrate on the walls. To further disprove the appliance theory, it also happened when we were too broke to pay the utility bills and we didn't even have heat or hot water. One night as I was drifting off to sleep, I realized the house was a little too quiet. Then the laundry chute in the hallway outside of my room slowly creaked open. Once it was fully opened, I started to hear the pounding both through the floors and coming up through the laundry chute itself. It got almost deafening. Then the laundry chute door slammed shut and it all stopped. One day my parents were bringing me their old washer and dryer after they had bought new ones for themselves. It was a bright sunny day early afternoon and I decided to go down to the basement ahead of time to make sure the pathway was clear for them when they brought the machines down. My golden retriever, Jake, went down with me. I walked down the stairs and walked towards the door that led to the unfinished part of the basement. Right as I reached out for the doorknob, something hit the door from the other side so hard the door bowed outwards towards me and even sent splinters flying. I'd never seen Jake move so fast. He was like a golden blur. One moment he was there, and the next he was upstairs hiding under the table, whimpering. We moved shortly after, but for different reasons. In 2010, I moved into a condo in Huber Heights, Ohio. My sister moved in with me for a while, since I was a single mom, read poor, and she just wanted to save some money. Immediately after moving in, my son, who had never had night terrors before, started waking up on and off all night long, screaming and looking at the corner in his room. I kept hoping that it was just that he hadn't settled in yet and felt uncomfortable in new surroundings. But my sister and I both kind of felt that something was off about the place. We'd be gone all day, come home, and little things would be moved, just slightly. Think knickknacks turned around so that they were facing backwards, 
or the curtains were pulled over plants sitting on the windowsills when we had left the curtains open, that sort of thing. And my sister always felt like she was being watched, and she heard footsteps at night. Finally, after a month of my son waking up screaming almost every night, I went into his room one day, sat on the bed by myself, and said, Listen, you're scaring my child. Please leave him alone. I felt dumb, but I was at my wit's end. He never woke up screaming again after that. But that night, my closet doors began opening and closing on their own. I had the master suite, one whole wall with sliding glass patio doors, and opposite that, one whole wall was accordion closet doors. My bed was in between them, about 18 inches away from the closet doors. My boyfriend and I went to sleep, and I was awoken in the middle of the night by a sound, but I didn't know what it was at first. I wrote it off as outside noise turned over in bed, now facing the closet, and started to go back to sleep, when I noticed, in the dark, the closet door right in front of my face was slowly sliding open. I jumped back so hard that I literally knocked my boyfriend out of bed. He was obviously confused and not happy. He got up on his knees with his elbows on the bed, not quite awake, but trying to figure out what had just happened. When we both saw the closet doors slide closed all on their own, both of us freaked out. From then on, we had frequent closet experiences. We'd be lying in bed when suddenly we'd hear the clothes hanging in the closet start swinging back and forth, rustle and move around. Then the door would open and close. Now, accordion closet doors are notorious for wearing out and not sliding right on the tracks. But these were fitted perfectly. Once the doors were closed, they were closed tight, and it took a bit of pressure to open them. My boyfriend and I also started hearing a distinct male voice at night. We couldn't make out the words, but we absolutely heard it, and it was pretty frequent. At the time, I was a nursing assistant working the 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift. After a week or so of nightly closet play, I was tired and grumpy. As I was getting ready for bed, I said out loud, Hey, I'm tired, and I'm working a double shift tomorrow. Can you please just let me sleep tonight? I went to bed as normal, and around 2 a.m., I awoke to the clothes moving in the closet. I was facing away from the doors at the time, and when they opened, this time... I felt someone step out of the closet and stand right behind me. But I was still so tired and grumpy that I said, Oh, so you finally decided to come out of the closet, huh? Then I ran like hell, just in case it went all poltergeisty on me. Nothing ended up happening, but I did sleep on the couch that night, just in case. One night, whatever it was, decided to put on a show of sorts for me, starting at the end of the room, going all around, then ending up back where it began. The curtains on the sliding glass doors billowed out, starting in the back corner and doing like a wave across all six panels of curtains. Then a calendar on the wall billowed out. I had a wooden shelf with a dowel attached where I hung all my necklaces, and the necklaces started to sway. The shelf also held a Mardi Gras mask with peacock feathers, and the feathers started to wave in this non-existent breeze as well. Then, the tassel thing that I had hanging on the switch on my floor lamp started to swing back and forth. Then, whatever it was, came around my bed, opened and closed the closet doors, and the show was over. I did not applaud, nor ask for an encore. One day, after picking up my son from school, he and I were standing in the kitchen. Suddenly, something big moved through the entire length of the dining room and came around the corner past the kitchen entrance. It moved fast, but made no sound. 
we both said, Did you see that? at the same time. I ran to the kitchen entrance, but I didn't see anything. Then I went up the hall to the master bedroom, and I got there just in time to see the closet doors closing. But this time, I also saw him. I saw a fully grown man. He moved like he was floating, and he made no sound. That was the only time I ever saw him, and I remember the experience like it was yesterday. One day, things changed. I was used to living with paranormal activity. It didn't scare me exactly. It would startle me from time to time, but mostly I was just used to it. Then one day, it just felt different. Like negative, oppressive or something. My sister had moved out, and my friend Josh had moved in. I was sitting on the couch when I heard scratching coming from behind the love seat. I thought we maybe had mice, so I got up to investigate. But when I did, the sound stopped. To me, that was just further proof that it was a mouse or something in the wall. I just figured I'd let the landlord know in the morning. And then a bit later, I went into my bathroom and the scratching sound started coming from a basket full of brushes and hair ties sitting on the toilet tank. There were no mice in that basket, and it freaked me out. The next day, I was in the dining room at work, feeding one of the residents, when that sound started coming from her tray right in front of us. She heard it too. She got weirded out and wanted to be taken back to her room. It was bizarre. At the end of my shift, I went home, and as soon as I walked in the door, I realized it felt way too cold in the house for the season. As soon as I got to the bedroom door, I knew something wasn't right. I am obsessive about making my bed in the morning, but my bed was a disaster. All the blankets and pillows were a mess. As I got closer, I noticed there was something on the wall by the headboard. I went to look, and there were little tiny drops of something rust-colored splattered all over the wall. They absolutely were not there when I left, and nobody had been home all day. It looked like dried blood. I even called my parents to come look, and they thought it looked like blood too. I never found the source or any explanation for that splatter. Eventually, though, it all just stopped. For seemingly no reason, it all just stopped. That bad feeling was gone, and the closet didn't even open and close on its own anymore. But it was one hell of a ride while it lasted, with multiple people witnessing things in that house. I have more stories, but I'm sure this one has gone on too long already. Maybe I'll post again later. Happy hauntings, everyone. Back in October of 2017, I was in the middle of a two-week-long European tour with my band, The Lazy Jams. There were four of us driving around Europe in a Honda Jazz, all the way from Scotland. Some venues would offer accommodation and food on top of our fee. After our gig in Zurich, Switzerland, some of the band members wanted to go out and see the local nightlife. But myself, I just wanted to lie down, relax, and browse the internet. We were coming off the end of our tour, and I just needed some downtime. We were led to our room, which was right above the bar. I assumed it would be a very basic room but they led us to one of the most modern Airbnbs I've ever stayed in. It was super clean, super high tech, with a shower, jacuzzi bath, kitchen, and beautiful wooden floors. I decided to sleep on the floor in the open plan living room kitchen on my blow up mattress and let my bandmates have the bedrooms. As they were getting ready to go out for the night, I saw a leaflet on the kitchen table that said that the place was built in the year 1260. This was incredible to me, as you'd never know it. The building and bar had been renovated to the point that you didn't even see any of the old design at all anymore. 
Before heading out, Gary, one of my bandmates, mentioned that he was going to have a bath when he got back. I asked him to please be quiet as he bathed, so as not to wake me. After they left, I turned over and went to sleep pretty quickly. Sometime later, I awoke to the sound of water dripping from a tap. My first reaction was being mad at my friend for not turning the taps off properly after his bath. I turned over and saw from the clock that it was 3.30 in the morning. I threw the blankets over my head and closed my eyes again. And then, it happened. What felt like a large weight came down on the left bottom corner of my mattress. If you've ever been in a bouncy castle, when the weight is distributed from one side to the other, it was like that. Except this was so hard, it launched me about an inch into the air. This was the first time ever that I felt real, sobering fear. I stopped breathing, and my heart was racing, and it was silent in the room. Then I felt it again, but this time less abrupt, more like a kid nudging you for attention. I remember thinking, this is not your imagination. This is actually happening. Terrified, I threw the blankets off and looked. I didn't see anything at first, until I looked further beyond the dining room table, which was about two feet from the foot of my bed. There, I noticed a shape. I blinked several times to make sure, but I swear I saw a girl with no face and long dark hair down to her feet. She was about five foot six, pale as anybody could be, and she looked soaking wet, as though she had been standing in the rain. I tried to scream, but I couldn't. I threw the blankets over myself and willed myself to go back to sleep. It was all I could do. In the morning when I woke up, I saw one of my bandmates sitting at the dining room table doing some work on his laptop. I was so relieved that it was daytime that I sprang up and immediately told him what happened. Of course, hearing my half-asleep rantings about a ghost, well, he just told me that I had a dream and to calm down. Then Gary, who was sleeping in one of the bedrooms, woke up and joined us. He looked very pale. I asked him if he was okay, assuming he was just hung over from the previous night. Later, when we packed our things and were getting ready to leave, two of the boys went to get the car, while Gary and I minded our belongings in the lobby over cigarettes and coffee. I asked Gary how he slept the night before, and he replied, Mate, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. I stared at him for a couple of seconds and asked what happened, thinking he was going to tell me a funny bar story from the night on the town. I could not have been more wrong. Now, let me say here that Gary and I are both skeptics. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't believe in ghosts. It just means we're the type of people that need proof before blindly believing anything. Well, the night before, we both got our proof. He told me in the middle of the night, someone had gotten into bed with him. He awoke to the feeling of the blankets being lifted up and someone sliding into bed right next to him. He told me that he was too petrified to move or call out and just tried to make himself go back to sleep like I did. So that explained why he was so pale when he woke up. He wasn't going to tell anyone about it because it sounded so unbelievable. And by the way, he never had that bath he was going to take the night before. So he wasn't at fault for the dripping tap. Maybe that's why the girl was wet. Did she take a bath with her clothes on? We stared at each other for a while in silence. And then we swore we would never sleep another night in Zurich, Switzerland. This has happened to me many times now. I'm a 16-year-old girl, 
and I was home alone and on the phone with my parents, asking when they were going to be back home. They were about an hour away, but said that my sister would be coming home soon from work. After I hung up, about ten minutes later, I heard the front door open and the keys being put on the table next to the door. Then I heard footsteps that sounded exactly like my sister's footsteps. They began heading down the hallway towards the living room and the kitchen. I kept calling out her name, but I never got a response. Then I heard a loud crash in the kitchen, like something very heavy fell. I got scared. First she didn't respond to my calling to her name, and now something crashed in the kitchen. I decided to call my sister's phone, and to my surprise, she said that she was still at work, but that she would be home in half an hour. Then I heard the footsteps coming back through the hallway and the sound of shoes being taken off and dropped at the foot of the staircase. I went to look and there was nothing there. I had to have my sister come home early from work as I was terrified. Also with this house, whenever we have guests, they all say they feel like they're being watched. And when they sleep over, they can hear people walking in the hallway at night. There have been times when I've been upstairs alone and a door will slam shut. We have carpet on the floors and that gives enough friction that you actually have to push a bit to close the door. None of the windows in the room were open, so it wasn't the wind. I've also felt like I was being watched and I have seen a black presence moving incredibly quickly through the house. Something else very strange happened a few months ago. I was sitting on my parents' bed watching TV, and I had a mug of green tea being held in both hands, and it felt like something pushed my hand in a way that it tipped the mug upside down, spilling the tea all over the bed. I looked, and I saw a very faint image of what seemed to be a little girl. I could only see her dress and legs, no arms, face, or anything. Then she just disappeared. There's a room downstairs that my dad now uses as a home office, and in that room, I feel very unwanted. Of course, I still have to go in there to use the printer for my schoolwork, but it's very uncomfortable. I had cousins staying over a few years ago, and we put air mattresses in that room for them to sleep on. They said they were never able to sleep because they always felt like somebody was in there with them, watching. Update. I found something out a bit weird a few nights ago. My older sister, who's 10 years older than me, Rose, also used to experience things, especially as a small girl. My other sister, Paula, who's 11 years older than me, told me of an incident that happened to Rose quite a few years ago. Rose was asleep in her room upstairs, and she woke up to see that same girl that I saw sitting on the edge of the bed. Apparently, Rose couldn't see her face either, but she said it seemed like the little girl wanted help. The girl beckoned my sister to follow her, and she led her into the front room, and my sister saw the silhouette of a man hanging from the rafters. Rose ran back to the room terrified. She searched the house history, and it turns out it used to be a pub, and a man did indeed hang himself in that room. What's strange is that I mainly feel uncomfortable in that room and Rose's old bedroom. I try to avoid those rooms as much as possible. Still, I experience things in other areas of the house as well. It's not like I feel unsafe or threatened. I just feel watched and very uncomfortable. Lately, I feel physically drained. It's like whatever is here is sucking the life out of me entirely. I'm posting this for my best friend who needs advice and some help. She wrote this. When we bought this house, it had been vacant for six months the owners moved out and were paying the mortgage on their new home and this house. We thought it a bit odd, 
but we bought it anyway. The first week we moved in, my husband stayed overnight at the old apartment to clean it up, and the kids and I stayed at the new house alone. That first night, I was facing the wall with my back to the bedroom door. All the lights were off. I was on my phone, and I heard, Honey. It was like a loud whisper, and it sounded like a man. My dog Luna jumped up, but there was nobody there. Then a second time this happened. It was 2 a.m. I got up to go pee, and when I lay back down, I was hugging my kids and the dog, who were all sleeping in bed with me, when I heard that same loud male whisper say, Mom. This time, I was like, Okay, something is trying to get my attention. Since then, I've heard someone walking in the hallways and the cabinets slamming shut on their own. And once in broad daylight, I heard it tell my five-year-old son, be quiet, in broad daylight while we were all in the kitchen. My five-year-old was like, who said that? Come out. It was so creepy. But what scared me the most was it actually yelled at my mother. She was in the living room helping to decorate and we were all in the bedroom. She heard a man's voice yell at her. She couldn't make out what it was saying, but she ran into her room and stayed there for the rest of the night. She was that scared. She came out the next morning and said, Mija, did someone die here? I heard a man yell at me and there was no one there and he sounded violent. Honey and mom are nicknames given to me by my husband and mother, and this spirit was calling me by those nicknames. We tried to get records of the house, but nothing came up. We just know it's an old house, but the spirit, or whatever it is, is definitely a man. This thing knows my nicknames, and it tried to mimic the voices of my mother and my husband. It sounded like an older man, too. My mother said it kept calling her woman in a very aggressive tone. And woman is my nickname for her. My husband did a cleansing with holy water and rosaries while repeating a prayer. He said that as he was doing that, he began to hear loud scratching inside the walls of the house. He was the only one there at the time. These spirits like to try to get our attention, especially mine. I've been slapped, poked, had things thrown at me, had the bed shaken while I was in it, my hair was pulled, I've heard whispers, you name it. I've been trying to just ignore the spirit. But can anyone tell me what this is? I'm desperate and scared for my children. At first I thought it was a mimic, but now I'm not so sure. Does anyone have any ideas? I'm a 16-year-old male, and I used to be a bit of a skeptic of all things paranormal, until one weekend at an abandoned house. To give you some backstory, I was with my two best friends at the time, Delaney and Julia. We were at Delaney's house and bored. I can't remember whose idea it was, but one of us had the idea to drive around some of the old dirt roads and check out the abandoned buildings. There are a lot of abandoned places around where we live. It's pretty far out in the country, surrounded by either farms or woods. So we went to the first two tobacco houses, took a few pictures, and just sort of goofed off. We got back on the road, and we saw an old, unkempt driveway. Keep in mind, hardly anyone lives along this road. So we decided to drive down the driveway, despite Julia saying that we shouldn't, because it just didn't feel right to her. Not because of the fact that we'd be trespassing, but because she had an extremely bad vibe about the place. However, Delaney and I insisted we drove up the driveway and went pretty far back into the woods. This is when things started to get weird. 
we parked the truck in a little clearing and noticed an abandoned house in the distance. However, before we even got out of the truck, the front sensors went off, beeping like crazy. Then, so did the back one. It was as if someone had walked around the truck. The weird thing, though, is that we were parked in a clearing, so there was nothing that could make the sensors go off like that. Even if there were something there, the sensors would have gone off before we even parked the truck and wouldn't have just randomly gone off like that in that order. Delaney and Julia were kind of freaked out, but I just ignored it. It wasn't until later that I would freak out too. We all got out of the truck and started walking towards the house. I was in front, with my friends walking a fair distance behind me. If I'm being honest, I was trying to show off by acting fearless. I really wasn't all that scared, until I saw her. A woman with dingy, unkempt hair in a colonial-style dress, peeking around the corner of the abandoned house. She looked right at me and put her finger up to her lips and shushed me very loudly. The feeling I had is almost indescribable. Imagine feeling as if all sense of safety was suddenly gone. My heart felt like it stopped and I actually started crying I was so scared. I knew she wasn't human. I don't know how I knew, I just knew. I turned around to my friends and I screamed, run, and started sprinting back to the truck. My cell phone flew out of my pocket halfway there and Julia told me this, but I told her, just leave it and run. Now, if you know me, you'd know that if I'm ditching my phone, it's serious. Julia and Delaney got back to the truck and tried to open it, but it was locked and we hadn't locked it. Delaney reached for her keys, but they were gone. And so was Julia's phone. It's as if whatever that thing was, was trying to keep us there. Delaney ran back and picked up our phones and also found the keys on the ground. We got in the truck and floored it out of there and back to Delaney's house. Now, you might think it was just a coincidence that we dropped all of our things. But our things, our phones and Delaney's keys, were all deep in our pockets and it made no sense that they would fall out on their own like that. Later at the house, we were all talking about the entire situation and I was explaining what I had seen and heard. My friends didn't even hear the shush, nor had they seen the woman. I was afraid they wouldn't believe me, but Julia reassured me that the look on my face and my tears were proof enough for her. We later found out that there have been quite a few sightings of ghosts along that road by the workers at Fort Pickett, a military base nearby. This story happened to my mother and my aunt when they were children. So, a bit of backstory. My mom and her family are from Indonesia. They had a house in the mountains with a one-acre backyard. The yard had a few trees and an old covered well that my mom and aunt liked to play around. The well was supposedly older than the house itself, but nobody really knew how old. At the time, my mom was around four and my aunt around seven. One day, my grandma was inside the house and she asked my aunt where my mom was. She said, oh, she's out playing with her friends. And my grandma said, what friends? Grandma was confused because there were no neighbors nearby and the closest house wasn't for miles. She went outside to investigate. Near the old well, she saw my mom running around in circles, seemingly being chased by something or someone and laughing. Grandma walked closer to get a better look and saw four children with her daughter, all laughing and running around. One child in particular really stood out. It was a young boy, dressed in suspenders and a hat, but his face was slightly obscured, almost like it had been rubbed out. 
The other three children seemed much smaller, and she couldn't see them as clearly. She said she had a bad feeling about it, so she called my mom back inside. Once inside, she asked my mom who she had been playing with, and mom just said they were her friends. The next day, my grandma and grandpa kept a very close watch on the two girls when they were playing in the yard. That afternoon, my grandma asked the maid about the previous tenants who had stayed at the property. The maid said that 30 years before, there was a family who had a young boy, and that boy died after falling down the well. Grandma had been told before they bought the house that the well was filled in and that the cover had been bolted into place for safety. But she had a very bad feeling when she saw my mom peel away from my aunt and run towards the well. She grabbed my mom's arm to stop her, and she ran to the well herself, calling her husband after her. When they got there, they realized that the cover was not on and the well was still hollow. My grandma called a service the next day to fill in the well and secure the cover so it wouldn't move again. She told me that my mom was very sad after that because she couldn't see or be with her friends anymore. To this day, my mom and aunt both believed that she had been interacting with ghosts. Even my grandma said so right up until her death. She claimed that my mom had a special proclivity towards the supernatural. Have you ever experienced a vengeful ghost? Or one that seemed to enjoy scaring you? Let me know if you have in the comments below. And if you're new here, or just not a regular poster, I invite you to introduce yourself to me and my family of darkness. We're a most welcoming community and always enjoy hearing from new people. So don't be shy. Post away and let us know what's on your mind so we can have a nice chat and welcome you to my dark little corner of the universe. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends, and I'll see you in the comments section.